today we will be explaining that how a grid station or a substation works. But before going into further details, first we must understand that how does electric power reach our homes. Now this is the simplest explanation of an electrical system. There are three major portions, generation, transmission and distribution. First we look at the generation part. Now at the generation side we have a power plant. The power plant produces electrical power as the output irrespective of the type of input power. So whatever is the type of the input power, the output power will be electrical power. There are different types of power plant. Let's have a quick look at some of these. In thermal power plant, coal is used as the input power to generate electricity. The main disadvantage of the thermal power plant is that it is not environment friendly. Another type is hydro power plant. In hydro power plant, water is used for the generation of electricity. Big dams are built where large reservoirs of water are saved. This water is used to rotate the turbine which in turn generates electric power. Hydro power plants are a clean source of energy and also very cheap in cost. Electric power can also be generated from solar power plants. In a solar power plant, electricity is generated using the heat from the sunlight. The main advantage of a solar power plant is that it is a clean source of energy and environment friendly. It is also less expensive because of the declining prices of solar panels worldwide. The disadvantage of solar plant is that a very small disruption in sunlight makes a big difference on the output power produced. Electricity can also be generated from nuclear power plants. In a nuclear power plant, electricity is generated from the heat produced by the nuclear reactor. So now coming back to our main topic. The power plant generates electric power normally in the voltage range of 11 kV to 33 kV. This power is then fed to a step-up transformer, which step-ups the input voltage to 500 kV or 220 kV, depending upon the distance of transmission line. This is not actually just a simple transformer, but a whole substation at the generation side. So, the electric power is transmitted on high voltage transmission lines, which are then fed to a transmission substation. Transmission substation steps down these voltages to 132 kV, which are then fed to a distribution substation. The distribution substation further lowers the voltages to 11 kV, which is fed to step down pole transformer. Now, these are the transformers that we see in the streets. This pole transformer further steps down the voltage to 415 volt or 240 volt which is finally delivered to our homes. 415 volt is the phase voltage that is the voltage difference between any two phases whereas 240 volt is the line voltage that is the voltage between any phase and the neutral. Now why is the electric power transmission carried out on high voltages? So. Here are the main reasons behind this. Less I square R losses. We know that the losses on a transmission line are directly proportional to the current. So for same power, if we increase the voltage, the current will decrease, resulting in less I square R losses. Number two, smaller size conductor is required. We know that the size of the conductor is designed by the amount of current flowing through the conductor. So, for less current, the conductor size will also be reduced, which is economical. Number 3. Bulk Power Transmission We can transmit bulk power with the help of high voltage transmission lines. Now, what is a grid station? It is an interconnection between two or more different transmission rings of different voltage levels. Our transmission substation looks like this. We have a very high voltage transmission line entering the grid station and two high voltage transmission lines leaving the grid station. The bidirectional arrows show that power can flow in either direction depending upon the situation. Now have a look at the distribution substation. A high voltage transmission line is entering the grid station and 11 kV feeders are going out of the grid station. These 11 kV feeders further distribute the electric power to consumers through step down pole transformers. Electrical power substation basically consists of a number of incoming circuit connections and a number of outgoing circuit connections connected to the bus bars. Bus bars are conductive bars to which different number of circuit connections is connected. Each circuit has certain number of electrical components such as circuit breakers, isolators, earth switches, current transformers, voltage transformers, etc. Now, what is the purpose of a grid station? There are two basic functions of a grid station, that is switching and control. 
let's have a look at these in detail one of the important function of a grid station is switching it means that on which lines we want the flow of electric power consider the following case we have an incoming line to the substation and two outgoing lines now for example we want to carry out maintenance work on outgoing transmission line number one so for this purpose the line must be in open position for safety so we can open the line from the grid station now all the power will flow to the outgoing line 2 suppose maintenance is needed on both the outgoing transmission lines so now we can open the second line from the grid as well that's how the grid performs switching function now we look at another important function of the grid station that is control to explain this feature we look at the transmission and distribution system again we have a transmission substation and a high voltage 220k line is feeding to the grid the substation transforms the input voltage to 132 kV which is then fed to a distribution substation the distribution substation steps down the voltage to 11 kV which is normally called a feeder this 11 kV feeder is then fed to a step down pole transformer which further converts it to 415 volt or 240 volt depending on phase and line voltages as mentioned before this supply is then used at homes, factories and hospitals etc. Now, when different electrical equipment are turned on by the consumers, there will be a high flow of current which is normally referred to as load in electrical terms. Now let's analyze the relation between power, current and voltage. Here P is the power, V is the voltage, I is current and cos theta is the power factor. Now from this basic equation we can see that for same amount of power if the current increases then voltage will decrease now coming back at our topic if the load on the consumer side increases more the voltages will drop for example in this case the distribution LT voltages can be as low as 370 volt or 180 volt normally the voltage drop is significant if there are inductive electrical equipment running at the consumer side for example motors etc so when the LT voltage decreases it will also decrease the feeder voltage for example 10.2 kV here now there will be multiple feeders connected to the same substation so the voltage drops will result in lowering the input voltage to the substation to 120 kV for example here now there will also be other distribution substations connected to the transmission substation which have low voltages as well now it's the task of the transmission substation to stabilize and control these voltages Let's look at the transformer basic equation that is V2 by V1 is equal to N2 by N1 where V2 is given as N2 by N1 multiplied by V1. Here N1 is the number of turns on the primary side of the transformer whereas N2 is the number of turns on the secondary side of the transformer. V1 is the input voltage to the transmission substation and V2 is the output voltage so we have to increase V2 to bring it back to its original value that is 132 kV in this case. From the equation we can see that by decreasing N1 V2 can be increased. But the question is that how are we going to decrease N1 in real time. We can do this by using tap changer on each side of the transformer. So by lowering the value of N1 with the help of tap changer we can control the output voltage level. We will discuss the tap changer in detail in the upcoming videos. Hopefully the idea of a grid station will be clear now. Thanks for watching and subscribe the channel for more informative and practical videos.